When Michael Calhoun trekked through the rugged California wilderness, a piercing screech shattered the tranquility of the ravine below, initially mistaking it for a baby's cry. He halted, scanning the surroundings, yet, the notion of an infant in such remote terrain seemed implausible, perched about two miles from town on the lookout trail, amidst the jagged ascent of the Sierra Buttes, he puzzled over the source of the eerie, high-pitched wail, a distressing blend of raw anguish and ghastly moans, dismissing the possibility of a baby's presence but unable to ignore the distress signal, Michael braved the possibility of encountering peril, recent nights had seen Downeyville, California, besieged by heightened coyote activity, pets vanished, leaving behind traces of coyote scat and tracks around the town's periphery and nearby trails, aware of the risks, Michael hesitated, envisioning a small creature falling victim to the hungry predators when he prepared to ascend a rocky outcrop. The haunting cry echoed once more, intensifying in urgency, zeroing in on its origin, Michael identified a ravine to his right, where a meandering creek flowed, gritting his teeth, he approached the access point leading into the ravine, the trail ahead plunged precipitously, offering no support, no vegetation, no footholds, it would be a solitary descent, reliant solely on his balance and determination, securing his gear, Michael steeled himself for the treacherous descent, with each step, the screech seemed to beckon, a siren call to the unknown depths below, as the panicked cries grew fainter, Mike's heart quickened with dread, each step down the treacherous ravine was a gamble, the loose soil threatening to betray his balance, but where that a misstep could spell disaster in this unforgiving terrain, he pressed forward cautiously, his senses heightened to the looming dangers, finally reaching the creek's bank and scathed, Mike surveyed his surroundings with a growing sense of unease. Coyote tracks crisscrossed the sandy expanse, evidence of the predator's restless presence, their erratic movements hinted at a frantic pursuit, their quarry perhaps close to its demise, rounding a bend, Mike encountered two coyotes darting through the shallows, their attention fixed on the distressing cries echoing from somewhere nearby, sensing the vulnerability of whatever lay injured or helpless, the predators edged closer, hunger driving their instincts without hesitation, Mike shed his backpack and hat, gripping them tightly as makeshift weapons, with determined strides, he advanced towards the coyotes, his voice raised in a primal shout, startled by his sudden aggression, the predators hesitated, affording him a narrow window to intervene, spotting a sack weighted down by rocks, Mike's blood ran cold at the realization of its grim contents, with steady hands, he untied the crude twine binding the opening, bracing himself for the unknown within, when the sack writhed with desperate movements, Mike's mind raced with apprehension, what creature lay trapped inside, carefully maneuvering to a safe distance, Mike released the creature onto dry land, maintaining a firm grip on the sack's opening, with bated breath, he awaited the moment of truth, steeling himself for whatever emerged from its confines, with resolve hardening his features, Mike secured the sack with one foot, bracing himself for the moment of truth, when he gingerly unfurled the sack's opening, disbelief, washed over him at the sight that greeted his eyes, never in his wildest imaginings had he conceived of finding a large domestic cat within, a creature on the brink of death, its once sleek fur now matted and frozen, its eyes pleading for salvation, the cat's futile struggles ceased as it gazed up at him with a haunting familiarity, betraying a trust born of past interactions with humans, Mike's heart ached at the thought of someone callously abandoning such a defenseless creature, subjecting it to the cruel whims of fate, tears welled in his eyes when he took in the cat's injuries, bloody paws, missing claws, and shivering from exposure to the elements, drawing the frail cat close, Mike offered what little warmth he could, his mind racing with urgency, time was of the essence, the cat's survival hinged on swift action, shedding his hiking coat, he cocooned the cat within its folds, determined to deliver it to safety, setting off towards the main road, Mike's steps quickened with purpose, though doubt gnawed at his resolve, he pushed forward, unwilling to concede defeat, his heart heavy with uncertainty, 
he dared not peek inside the coat, fearing the worst, an hour later, salvation loomed on the horizon as he flagged down a passing vehicle, with a brief explanation, he found himself whisked away towards the town, the driver propelled by a sense of urgency matching his own, in the vet's examination room, hope warred with apprehension when Mike laid the bundled cat upon the table. With practiced hands, the vet conducted a thorough assessment, his expression grim with foreboding, despite the vet's grim prognosis, Mike refused to entertain the notion of euthanasia for the suffering tabby, with conviction in his voice, he vowed to cover all necessary expenses for the cat's treatment, pleading with the vet to exhaust every avenue for its recovery, meanwhile, his efforts to seek justice for the abandoned feline hit a dead end with the local authorities, without any leads or evidence, the perpetrator remained at large, leaving the cat's fate hanging in the balance, as days turned into weeks, Mike couldn't shake the thought of the cat's uncertain future, the prospect of it languishing in a shelter weighed heavily on his conscience, prompting him to take matters into his own hands, three weeks later, returning home to his cottage, Mike's heart swelled with warmth at the sight that greeted him, nestled in the center of his bed, Garfield, his newfound companion, rested, peacefully, a testament to resilience and second chances, in that moment, as Garfield stirred from slumber to greet him with a contented purr, Mike knew he had found his purpose, with a smile, he vowed to cherish this bond, offering Garfield a home and a future filled with love, reflecting on his journey, Mike couldn't help but marvel at the unexpected turn of events, in Garfield, he had found not just a pet, but a loyal companion, a testament to the enduring power of compassion and second chances. As the story drew to a close, viewers were invited to ponder the choices they would make in Mike's shoes, the tale of Garfield's rescue left a lasting impression, a beacon of hope in a world fraught with uncertainty, that's all about the first story and now let's watch another similar story. When the sun dipped below the horizon, Baltimore's skyline bathed in a golden glow, bustling streets filled with people and the scent of smoke lingering in the air, it seemed like just another typical day in the city, but for one man, Ronnie, it would prove to be far from ordinary, Ronnie, a black firefighter living in Baltimore, knew the city's rhythms all too well, despite dedicating years to his role, he often felt overlooked in a place that frequently ignored its less fortunate residents, yet, Nothing could have prepared him for the night ahead, it all began with a distant rumble, akin to distant thunder, then, the skies opened up, unleashing torrents of rain that soon escalated into a full-blown flood, Ronnie, amidst the chaos, received a call of unprecedented urgency, a massive storm was approaching, threatening to engulf the city in its fury, with swift determination, Ronnie rallied his fellow firefighters, issuing urgent calls for assistance, when they raced to respond, the grim reality of the situation unfolded, reports flooded in of inundated neighborhoods, particularly affecting the city's most vulnerable, arriving at ground zero, Ronnie confronted a scene of desperation and heartache, families scrambled to salvage what little they could as the floodwaters surged, leaving destruction in their wake, amidst the chaos, Ronnie's resolve remained steadfast when he led the effort to evacuate those in harm's way, despite the challenges and prejudices he faced along the way, it felt like something out of a blockbuster movie, except this was far more terrifying because it was all too real, Ronnie knew he had to act swiftly to save as many lives as possible, without hesitation, he leaped into action, racing through the flooded streets, aiding anyone in need of rescue from the impending danger, wading through fierce floodwaters up to his neck, Ronnie fearlessly shielded frightened children from the raging waves, aware that their survival depended on his swift intervention, throughout the harrowing night, he tirelessly worked to evacuate families from their inundated homes, carrying them to safety on his back, just when Ronnie thought he had done all he could, a faint cry caught his attention from a nearby alleyway, rushing to investigate, he discovered, Two small children huddled together in fear, with unwavering determination, Ronnie flung himself over them, shielding them from the relentless onslaught of water, guiding them through obscured passages and narrow shortcuts, Ronnie safeguarded the children from harm, ensuring their bare feet remained unscathed amidst the debris-strewn alleyways, 
Exhausted but resolute, he carried the toddlers on his shoulders, navigating through rising waters and desperate crowds seeking refuge after hours of relentless effort. Ronnie finally spotted a glimmer of hope, a safe haven illuminated by headlights and filled with families seeking shelter from the floodwaters. With sheer determination, Ronnie delivered the exhausted children to safety, where they were welcomed with open arms by caregivers who recognized his heroic efforts, breathless but undeterred. Ronnie sought a change of clothes for the children, ensuring their comfort and well-being after their traumatic ordeal in the face of adversity. Ronnie's selfless courage shone brightly, a beacon of hope in the darkest of times. Ronnie, his heart heavy with concern for the children's well-being, sought sustenance from the staff who distributed scarce rations to the most vulnerable, elderly, sick, and children. Tough times demanded tough management, and Ronnie, now seated with the kids, endeavored to provide comfort amidst the chaos, taking a moment to properly observe them. Ronnie realized the twins were no more than five years old, their golden hair resembling sun rays, the girl, Sarah, shorter and clinging to her brother's arm, responded shyly as Ronnie introduced himself as a firefighter and their friend, promising to keep them safe and reunite them with their parents, assuring the children of their safety, Ronnie gently explained that he needed their help too, with innocent sincerity, they agreed unsure of how they could assist the towering figure before them, when they exchanged names, Jenny and Tony for their parents. Corrected by David, it became clear that the children's guardians were yet to return from work when the storm struck, left with no choice but to seek refuge outside. They found themselves in Ronnie's care amid the tumultuous floodwaters. Despite Ronnie's efforts to locate their family, nobody seemed familiar with the children or their parents' whereabouts. With little time and dwindling options, Ronnie made a heartfelt decision to personally care for them until their parents could be found or until a safe home elsewhere in the city could be secured. With resolve in his heart and the children's trust in his hands, Ronnie embarked on a journey of temporary guardianship, determined to keep the promise he made to them that they would be safe, loved, and reunited with their family, taking the twins under his wing. Ronnie brought them to his own home, offering them not just food and shelter, but also a sense of safety and security amidst the uncertainty that gripped them all. When days turned into weeks and then months, hope of finding their parents dwindled, leaving Ronnie with a heavy heart, realizing that the twins' future lay beyond Baltimore. Ronnie made the difficult decision to relocate them to his aunt's home in the neighboring city, where they could start anew and perhaps find the stability they deserved. Leaving behind notes with everyone he knew in Baltimore, Ronnie ensured that the twins' parents could eventually locate them. With his aunt's support, Ronnie cared for the children as if they were his own, providing them with the love and stability they craved. Soon, the people of their new town began to see them not as lost orphans, but as the Ronnie kids, a testament to the impact Ronnie had made on their lives. Six months passed, and just as the twins began to settle into their new life, a knock on Ronnie's door brought unexpected joy. The twins' parents, injured during the storm and separated in the chaos, had finally tracked them down in a tearful reunion. The parents expressed their gratitude to Ronnie for his unwavering care and love for their children, explaining their harrowing journey to find their kids. The parents revealed the extent of their own struggles and injuries, with their family reunited. Ronnie faced a bittersweet decision as the twins were now of school age, yet, he knew it was time for them to return to their parents' care. When the twins embraced their parents once more, Ronnie watched with a mixture of sadness and pride, knowing that he had played a vital role in their journey back to each other. Though their time together had come to an end, the bond forged between Ronnie and the twins would forever remain a testament to the power of compassion and selflessness in times of need. Despite the passing years, she never ceased inquiring about the children. When the children departed with their parents, they took a piece of Ronnie's heart with them. We will never forget you, Uncle Ronnie, the girl assured him. With a tight hug, echoed by the boy's enthusiastic plea, come visit us. Fast forward 27 years, Ronnie found himself visiting friends at a neighboring hospital. When he was taken aback by unexpected news, the twins, 
now grown adults, had reciprocated Ronnie's kindness by establishing a college fund in his honor, this noble gesture ensured that generations of Ronnie's family, regardless of financial means, would have access to higher education if they so desired, overwhelmed by their generosity. The twins remained steadfast in their gratitude towards Ronnie, their eyes lit up with recognition as they warmly welcomed him, exclaiming, Uncle Ronnie, you're just the same, Sarah's infectious enthusiasm mirrored that of years past, promising, just wait till David sees you, he'll be in tears, Ronnie felt transported back to the moment he first met the shivering twins, now standing before him, tall and radiant, their smiles radiated gratitude and vitality, filling Ronnie with an unparalleled sense of pride. They extended a heartfelt invitation to Ronnie, making regular celebratory dinners at their home a cherished tradition, a testament to the enduring bond forged through Ronnie's selfless care and devotion. During those gatherings, everyone came together to share meals, exchange stories, and express gratitude for one another acknowledging the highs and lows they had weathered over the years, in a touching moment, they presented Ronnie with a special gift, a framed photo capturing the three of them on that pivotal night 27 years prior when Ronnie had intervened to save their lives. Overwhelmed with emotion, Ronnie expressed heartfelt gratitude for their enduring remembrance, he cherished the gift as one of the most meaningful tokens of appreciation he had ever received, a constant reminder of the profound bond he shared with Sarah and David, that's all about this story and now let's watch another similar story while on patrol around the mall's well-known aisles. Officer Daniel happened upon something that made him feel something deeply. A little child, not much older than three, was sitting by herself in a forgotten area of the parking lot dwarfed by the other cars, he walked gingerly toward her, lowering himself to her level as a wave of apprehension passed over him. The young child glanced up at Officer Daniel, tears shining in her eyes when she murmured something that made him shudder. A voice said, your support means the world to us. Diverting Officer Daniel's focus from the agitated child, Ella's soft-spoken words, Mom doesn't want me home, lingered in the air adding to the officer's growing uneasiness, a nod at him. He tried to strike a balance between tenderness and mounting concern. Was she really alone? He brushed the idea aside, holding fast to the idea that her parents were just lost in their own thoughts. Let's go inside. Okay. He extended his hand, and the two of them walked into the busy shopping center. When he arrived at the control room, he informed the information officer of the circumstances. A. Hey, Shout went out in the building asking Ella's parents to please stand up. The officer's eyes briefly flashed with optimism, but it vanished as soon as he saw Ella's face break down in desperation, reiterating in a barely audible whisper, No, mommy doesn't want me. The information officer and the officer had a silent conversation in which they expressed uncertainty to one other. They chose to wait, the announcement resounding, but the hallways were still deserted, as the shopping center's closing time approached, the security cameras captured nothing but empty walkways, and they began to feel the weight of the situation, heavy and foreboding, a ray of light appeared when Jason deftly sidestepped Ella's gaze, turning their stroll to the station into a colorful counting game where they had to name each yellow automobile they came across, Michelle, a co-worker who had a daughter, appeared to be the ideal person to give Ella comfort when she first arrived, Ella was really excited when Michelle mentioned the stuffed animals in her office, so Jason could concentrate all of his efforts on tracking down Ella's parents. Jason searched databases and missing person reports, but he came up nothing. He had to dig a little farther, sort through the little leads he had, watch the security tape again. He widened the scope of his search, examining each shot for any hint of interaction with Ella. Motivated by her mysterious remarks, Jason set out on a quest to find the elusive blue-doored house. He wandered into the back streets of the town, his eyes searching endlessly for that special blue. The task was like trying to find a needle in a haystack, but the desire to discover Ella's narrative drove him on, drawing him more into the maze and deserted streets of the town's forgotten area. His unwavering search paid off. The blue-doored house that Ella had described was standing there, however, the picture he saw crushed his hopes of finding a cozy, welcome sanctuary. The house was abandoned. 
With boarded up windows and a weed choked garden, it was surrounded like a cloak by a dense silence that seemed heavy with abandonment. Stepping inside, Jason was met by a deafening quiet, the echo of a life once lived resonating within the hollow walls. Each room held a tale of neglect, peeling paint and dust-laden surfaces painting a vivid picture of the vibrant life that had once filled these now eerily silent spaces. The evidence pointed to a hasty departure, a sudden exit hinting at a story. Steeped in urgency and perhaps desperation, each room served as a fragmented chapter in Ella's life before the parking lot. The once vibrant walls now faded and peeled must have echoed with the sounds of laughter and joy. Dust-laden toys and small clothes lay scattered, silent testaments to the child who once played, cherished, and called this place home. The house's disrepair mirrored the turmoil that had likely engulfed Ella's family. Broken furniture, cracked picture frames, and the overall dilapidation spoke volumes of decline and distress. Ella's plight stirred a complex cocktail of emotions within Jason, a powerful sense of connection and responsibility settling upon him unlike anything he had felt before. This was unlike anything he'd ever encountered in his job. Her strength and resiliency struck a deep chord with him, strengthening his unrelenting resolve to get her back with her family. Jason was left with an increasing number of unanswered questions following rumors of the parents' sudden departure. What had caused such an extreme action? Were the neighbors' mentions of financial and social problems merely a surface-level view of a deeper story? These enigmatic shards of the past added another degree of devastating intricacy to the issue. Jason made a coincidental find during his investigation, a secret room hidden behind a movable bookcase. In sharp contrast to the overall deterioration, this concealed area seemed to have escaped the passage of time, unlike the rest of the house. As soon as he stepped inside, a surge of curiosity and anxiety swept over him. He had a feeling that this chamber would contain important jigsaw pieces that would reveal Ella's family's past. Jason went to the dusty mailbox outside the deserted house next. He went through every letter with great care, noting who sent it and when. He looked through the typical bills and unsolicited pamphlets, looking for any scrap of correspondence that would hold the key to solving the riddle. Surrounding Ella's current predicament and the loss of her family, Jason noticed a particular collection of letters among the random mail, multiple correspondences from a nearby women's shelter. His interest was aroused by this finding, which provided a concrete connection to a network of assistance for mothers and children in need. The fact that the shelter was involved suggested that Ella's family was going through more than just the surface problems. Behind the abandoned house lay a secret. Reality, the letters themselves turned out to be a devastating discovery. They combined official records with private requests for help to offer a vivid picture of Ella's mother's despair. They verified that she had contacted the shelter in a desperate attempt to get advice and assistance. She wrote about her deteriorating health and how she couldn't take care of Ella by herself. Every sentence was a mother's frantic cry for help to keep her child safe, and it was filled with anxiety and haste. Jason pieced together the heartbreaking puzzle with the help of the shelter personnel. Ella's mother took the heartbreaking decision to abandon her daughter at the mall in a last-ditch act of love due to her failing health and limited options. Since she was no longer able to provide Ella with a better future, she hoped that someone would locate Ella and provide it. This last resort, which sprang from love and despair, depicted a mother who had been driven to the brink, another level of complexity emerged as more questions were asked. Although the shelter staff knew very little about Ella's father, it was not reassuring. They thought he was up to no good, having disappeared without a trace. The painful truth of Ella's mother's condition was further enhanced by this discovery, which illuminated the reason behind her feeling so completely alone in her problems. Jason felt the weight of Ella's desertion descend on him like a shroud. Ella's voyage demonstrated her extreme loneliness and fragility as a result of her father's disappearance and her mother's terrible death. Jason was deeply burdened by this discovery, which strengthened his resolve to make sure Ella has a better, safer future. Years later, Ella would frequently ask Jason, who was now her official godfather, to retell their voyage when Ella's laughter filled their home. 
she had such a strong effect on him that he was amazed at how much she had changed him, he understood that their journey was about him finding meaning in life as much as Ella finding a place to call home. It served as a monument to life's unforeseen turns, the steadfast strength of compassion, and the exquisitely transformational power of providing for another person, Jason had not only saved a missing child by locating Ella, but he had also changed his life by discovering a deeper feeling of belonging, together, their undying love and shared hardships built a link that became a beacon of hope pointing the way to a better future for them both, above is today's story, if you like it, please subscribe and give it a thumbs up, see you next time.